Rabbi David Lappin is an author, speaker, and management consultant. In the early 1970s, he was active in Jewish outreach in Johannesburg, South Africa. At the time that I started as a rabbi in Johannesburg, the first few years I was the rabbi in Stellenbosch. We then moved to Johannesburg where my business job was and I established a base Medrash there, which was one of the three instigators of the Balchuva movement in, in South Africa. And questions started mounting. Was it right that I was spending time in business, that I was had this, this, this break? It wasn't even a half-day job, the, 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 the teaching and the terror. They were really two full-day jobs. So my family paid quite a heavy price in terms of that. And was that the right thing to be doing? There were one or two issues in the, in the broader community that is Rabonim we had to make some decisions on. Um, and I thought it was time on the first trip to the United States, which was in 1976, I think, to try and get to see the Rebbe, who I'd heard so much about. My wife came in with me, and as we came in, he got up from his chair and came right around his desk and asked me to sit down. And I realized then this was going to be a conversation. It wasn't just going to be a symbolic moment. I remember asking him, about some limitations that I felt and, and, and I, the, the responsibility he was putting on me almost seemed overwhelming. What he was expecting of me to accomplish and to achieve and, and, and like unlimited, it seemed almost unbelievable that, that anybody could expect that of one, certainly of me, I was a young person at the time. And I said that to him, I just said, I don't think that this is realistic, it's feel very humbled and very honored that you even talk to me in that way, but, but, but I, it, just, it just isn't realistic in terms of vastness of impact and how far that impact can go and, and, and how many people to influence and, and to stay in business, not just because business was a vehicle of Parnosa, a way for me to earn a living independently of my Rabonis, which is really how I'd seen it, but to stay in it because it was a vehicle of Kiddush Hashem and that my impact could be much further if I was doing both, um, and that I, sh I shouldn't give up one for the other. I should do more in, in, in the Torah world and do more in the Rabbonus and the Kiru world and keep the business as well and teach more and do more. It, it was just like more, 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 and where, where does that come from? I'm already up to here. Um, and then he looked at me and he said, I'll tell you your difficulty. You think that human interaction is a chemical interaction, it's like a chemical reaction, um, and it isn't. With a chemical reaction you have two elements and they react and then you get some kind of third compound as a result of that. But people aren't chemicals. When people interact it's a nuclear reaction. And a nuclear reaction you've got to think of in terms of a, a center spot and a sphere and it reacts in all directions at the same time. And as the outer rings of that sphere get bigger and bigger, the number of people you're touching just get bigger and bigger, and, uh, and, and there's no limit. So when you touch the heart of one person, that's a nuclear explosion, because that person, in turn, touches so many other people. And, and each person you touch, it might be a moment's interaction. If you really touch that person, that's a nuclear explosion in terms of impact. And what was beautiful about it was you were talking to a living example of that that powerful radiation of energy which you felt to realize that there are thousands of people out in, in Chinuch and in Kiruv today who are drawing on that same energy. That is something historic. To build a reservoir that people can draw on so long after he's left, uh, to me, is just astonishing. <laughs>